All right. Um, Cece, we'll let you tell us when we should. All right. Well, the, uh, I think we have everybody in the room. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we were laughing for those of you who got on early because we're um, in this monthly theme that we're uh, courageously exploring, which is the nature of happiness. Uh, and if you weren't with us last week, we kind of opened it with trying to establish what we mean by states and feelings uh, it, it, relative to happiness. And and I and I think we we sort of tapped it, but this idea of states and feelings. Uh, relative to happiness is going to kind of continue to circle us because it has quite a bit to do with what we're going to refer to as relative happiness or happiness that is a part of what we'll call the um, uh, body-mind experience. So the topic today is, is the opposite of happiness unhappiness? And I'm going to just suggest that like Alice, we are going to go down the rabbit hole today together. And that's what makes this group of friends and the gatherings that we do in the Reconnected Life community so valuable because we can go down the rabbit hole together and we can explore and investigate and not have to have the answers. Okay? So we want to start off this session. We want you to just answer yes or no, take out a little piece of paper or something. We're going to ask three questions and, and, and they're just going to get a yes or a no answer. So just put one, two, and three, and then you're going to put a Y yes or an N no next to the question. Okay. We're going to go fast. Don't worry if you didn't remember the question or Eric's just going to read it quickly and just yes or no. Ready? So, do you find yourself doing things to remind yourself to be happy or that you are happy? Yes or no? Next question. Do you look for happiness? Do you look for it in people, laughter, animals, infants, children, or anywhere else? Yes key, or no. The key is looking. Do you look for happiness? And three, are you continuously doing things to create and or maintain your happiness? Just a quick yes or no. All right. So we are continually, again, circling in our conversation around the infinite nature of our being. Because the reconnective healing experience is continually in the, 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 the very engagement or the nature or the inquiry or the investigation of every reconnective healing experience. It is sort of uh, unobscuring or wiping off the lens or diffused fog of our true nature, okay? That's every reconnective healing experience. So we recognize that that infinite nature is not reducible. It, it, it doesn't have the capacity to be the opposite of anything, really. But happiness, we would also say, isn't a state or a feeling. We've, we've touched on that. It's confused often with the obscuring or diffusing in the experience we would call unhappiness, which would be a state or a feeling. So there is a diffusing in relation to all experience. Each one of us sitting here, please look at someone in the gallery. Each and every face is a diffusion. It is a limitation and the limitation of infinite being, or we'll say consciousness. Consciousness experiencing itself as each and every one of us is a diffusion or 
a limitation. We have to give language a little bit of range here because we always have to accommodate. And we know many of you speak many different languages. So limitation does not mean a uh, something negative. It is just an obscuration or a diffusion. So when you, here's a question we want you to ponder a little. When you go searching for happiness, where are you searching? Where, where, where are you searching? Just quickly write something down. Hey everyone, Rob Koenig here, co-director for The Reconnection, inviting you all to the next Catalyst Weekend event scheduled on January 15th and 16th in beautiful Southern California. This is your opportunity to bring the Reconnective Healing experience into your life on a deep and personal level. Throughout the weekend, we will explore many ways in which you can expand your awareness and truly recognize what it means to reconnect with your full potential. I can't think of a better way to start 2022. We look forward to seeing you all there. Okay. And under the mattress is not a good answer. <laughs> In your backyard might be an answer, but give some thought to that. Where do you go searching for happiness? So again, from the model of the reconnective healing experience, there, there is no opposite of happiness. It can only be sort of represented through this veiling, we'll say, uh, that might be just a veiling of our wholeness, right? But think for a moment, and here's your, your rabbit hole here, about all the advancements to our human experience to our planetary experience that has appeared out of this diffused state, also known as unhappiness. Okay? I want you to just, and for a moment, just jot down one simple thing that you would say emerged out of that you would consider to be an advancement. We all love this word expansion. Expansion does not exist in the infinite. So we'll say that expansion can exist in a way in our relative happiness. So just write one thing down, one advancement that has occurred that you can think of in your life that appeared out of what we'll call this limited state of happiness or diffused state of uh, unhappiness. And the simplest way to grasp that enhancement doesn't exist within the limitless i would look at it this way if something is already infinite you can't expand infinite can you okay that's another layer to the rabbit hole but we're, we're let's just stay on relative and absolute happiness chelsea's not in her head i'm going with chelsea that we, we we are really exploring what is about to become choices conscious choices. So when we recognize that often sending ourselves further out to somewhere, something, someone, that that activity, sending ourselves somewhere to be happy, sending ourselves to something that makes us happy or to someone that brings us happiness. This is sort of the diffusion or the activity of, um, uh, of often what we'll call life experience, okay? And it's a choice. It's a choice to choose absolute happiness, which I'm, I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna make this statement. Someone who lives in what we'll call absolute happiness probably doesn't talk about it very much. They probably don't speak about the nature of their ab absolute happiness very often, either professionally and or otherwise. Uh, it, it is enough to be in the recognition <laughs> that they need nothing no one, no thing. And often, many people go about their lives 
along, I'll say, that very direct path because there isn't any more of a direct path than that in a way. And they go to work every day and they live in their families and and they don't make the choice to advance, let's say, in this way that we're speaking about it through that diffused or veiling of happiness they don't make the choice to advance the human experience. Okay? And and for those of you who are well-versed in, 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 in religion, when you look at sort of the way in which um, all that is worthy <laughs> uh, through, the, uh, through, through the lens of, of religion, um, that has come from suffering in a way, or from for, uh, from sacrifice in a way. It's it's important to kind of again just bring in the choices that we make around relative happiness, a state or a feeling, where lessons around the return to home often uh, come about. Relative happiness, again, versus an absolute knowing. So what what would it look like? I want you to just write down relative happiness, absolute happiness. We're just exploring the two corridors. And... Just at the point in the conversation that we're at, what would you choose? Just pick one for now. What would you choose? And and if you'd like to, um, why? So when we keep adding and adding. Which we do. We keep adding and adding. And yet the more we add, oftentimes we find the less happy we are, the less we see ourself until ourself calls itself back. So close your eyes for a moment. And I just, we want to explore this understanding of being called back to happiness versus the search for happiness. And if you just allow yourself, just this is a very personal inquiry, to think about something or some someone or some situation in your life that's been unfolding that maybe has caused this diffusion, this obscuration of your true nature that will call unhappiness. And as it unfolded, ultimately, in its resolution, that resolution could have come about in a lot of different forms, an absolute ending, a solution, a result. Did you arrive at a new place called happiness? Or did you return to happiness? <coughs> That's a very intimate question. And you keep it to yourself. But it, it's an inquiry. And we want you just to just observe what, what comes from that. What is a portal? It's a doorway to transformation. It's an expansion of our online essentials, our level one, an eight plus hour e-learning course. The portal helps us discover our roadblocks that may be stopping us from living our fullest potential. How does the portal help bring about these benefits? Easy to follow short segments with interactive exercises, information acquired not only through the mind, but through interaction with the frequencies themselves. It includes the eight hours of the online essentials course. Two key chapters, one on love and one on healing from the new series, The Inner Compass. It brings the possibility for instant transformation, healing, 
and the evolution of each and every one of us. Okay, so again, I want to honor and we want to honor that the journey of unhappiness has led to tremendous advancements in disease prevention for the body mind, depression. It has led to works of art and music that, in our experience, are unspeakably important and valuable. Everything has a purpose. Even what we would think wouldn't have a purpose has a purpose if only to allow us to explore what its purpose might be. So for many, unhappiness has become a life practice. Or a habit. Until we return home, which is beautifully described in the end of Eric's first book, The Reconnection, Heal Others, Heal Yourself, if you haven't read it. So we want to also just be in the recognition that if we become unhappy, searching for happiness, and we don't seemingly recognize Looking for happiness is not a search. It can't be searched. Then we trade. And we have to understand we are trading absolute happiness for appreciation, enjoyment, even gratitude. Appreciation, enjoyment, gratitude. This is relative happiness and it has a purpose, but we are absolutely at the intersection, certainly in this conversation and this community, to recognize that this is an intersection of choice, not ignorance. It is not an intersection of not knowing the difference. And you know, in a sense, let's think about this. We are happiness, we are happiness. So when we are searching for happiness, we're not only saying that we don't have it or we are not that at the moment or we can't find that, but in a sense, we're saying, I am not. So just play with that. See where it leads you. The search itself is saying, I am not. But, but the choice to explore states of appreciation, enjoyment, and gratitude in relative happiness is exceedingly valuable along the pathway for all human development. There, in, in this finite experience, again, all experience, is made of the stuff that will call peace, happiness, energy, light, and information. So here's, a, here's something to just kind of look around the, the ecosystem of your life. Have you ever been around someone who is always maintaining themselves in a super happy mood? There, is, there's, there, there can be a tension around that and 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 even attention around being that person because it takes a lot of self-discipline and work in a way but often we envy copy and even strive to do the same and and again these are choices this is not one any longer that we can speak into through ignorance it's not this is the only pathway and I've had some close friends who were lovely people who were always so happy, but you could feel them striving to maintain that happiness. And somewhere in the striving to be something, I sensed that they weren't allowing themselves to be. 
I know many people who uh, consciously choose uh, relative happiness, and they are the most, they are change makers in the world. Mm-hmm. Absolute change makers in the world. Relative to the world and relative to the finite being in the world, they are change makers. So that's just, there is no judgment here. We're exploring, no. we're having a very fluid, accountable in a way, conversation. Okay, question. I have been fortunate enough to know such a person. Um, and when I say fortunate enough, the dynamics are so interesting. But you've read about people who win the lottery. We're not talking about people who win a little bit in Vegas or Prague or wherever you have these centers for uh, unusual events where all of a sudden you go from penniless to being a millionaire. So the question that is often raised throughout the kind of world of psychologists and, and, and even neuroscientists, why and what happens often, more than often, to people who have been graced with the winning of the lottery amongst the percentage? Why is the suicide rate, the taking of their lives after they have amassed, uh, you know, a um, amount of, of money and funds that would be more than multiple lifetimes where and and in what way does that become such a common trackable statistic just again absolute happiness relative happiness so very 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 interesting to explore this so so we did that we did okay (laughs) we're going to do it let's do a theoretical exercise all right head and paper again I want you to look for happiness. Your eyes can be open, your eyes can be closed, but look for happiness. What, however that feels to you, whatever that means to you, look for happiness and then write down or make a note of two things. A, where did you look? And B, what did you find? So let's do that. And then we have one more coming after this. Look for happiness. Where did you look and what did you find? Okay, take another 30 seconds. Good. Okay, next question, or a little exercise. To be happy, we'd like you now to write down two, approximately two things that you would change and why. Two things that you would change, and after those, if you'd like to, then write down and why you might make those changes. Okay, I want to read something because you've all commented here. And Harry writes something. Uh, we're about to not only acknowledge a beautiful example that Harry gave uh, in a in a um, LNL sharing on Facebook, but he he writes something here. It must be all that birthday juju he's got going mm-hmm. on. Happy birthday, Harry! Um, Harry writes: Seeing happiness is seeing your nature. Looking for happiness is saying. It's lost. That's and, so and beautifully it, concise. It's concise, but I want to, I want to be very thoughtful here. 
it's not lost. You can't lose something that you are. And, and that's why I think it's really important to recognize that this diffusing of the infinite nature of our being, unnameable, irreducible, not of space and time, but as we know through the reconnected healing experience, in recognition of. So I think what Harry's saying is looking for happiness is not that it is lost, it's saying that it's lost. Do you ever go, you know, I can't find this, I can't find this. I know it's not lost, but I can't find it. And that's what we're saying. So when we're seeing happiness, we're seeing our true nature. When we're looking for it, we might not be. Right. And at the same time, I I, I, I want us to suggest that um, the veiling of happiness is the experience of all finite beings, all finite people, places, animals, nature. Let us not create a judgment. It is the experience of the infinite experiencing itself. So we are not um, looking to uh, explore anything other than how you identify absolute versus relative happiness. What do you choose and why? And this is freedom. You can't claim multidimensionality if, in a way, there isn't a recognition of both your absolute versus or and relative happiness, or said another way, your infinite, irreducible, unnameable being, and your finite, limited, diffused body mind experience. So there, there, the, the precipice here is awareness. And in a way, Harry's example that he used was, and I, this is so easy for us to notice, a smile breaks through the face of a child who is trying to remain angry and upset. Take yourself there. Whether you have children, you, you walk down the street and you see a child in a tantrum, whatever it may be, there's an interruption. And that child breaks through on his face. The nature of the child breaks through in that smile. When the smile breaks through, it is that child's nature. So the child is struggling to present him or herself in one way, trying to remain angry. I am going to be angry. A and state then, or a feeling. Right, and the true nature of the child, which is not the state or a feeling. Is breaking through what isn't the child. Right. So the true nature really is, I mean, the state is really no match for the true nature. So sort of in your, your exploration and your inquiry here, I mean, I would say if you're someone who moves in the range of happiness and depression or happiness and the obscuration of or the diffusing of happiness, then there's tremendous freedom to move through this sort of uh, awareness scale. And recognizing that the happiness that we are constantly bringing itself back to itself in a way is the, the, the nature of consciousness. It's the nature of consciousness, one entity. It is the nature of oneness. And awareness. So when we are not aware, you could say it, it is misery. When we lose awareness, 
to the content of our experience, we think it's the experience's content that's creating the unhappiness, but it that's isn't. Well okay, let's say, all right, we'll say it again. So when we lose awareness to the content of our experience, we think that it is the content of the experience that's creating the unhappiness. And let's look at the lotto winner. The lotto winner received money and maybe was buying a lotto ticket every day because thought and believed that winning the lotto would create the happiness. And in receiving the money, the search for happiness continued. And when it wasn't found in the search, that lotto winner chose home. I mean, in a different way. In a different way. <laughs> but but it, 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 this is, I think, important. If happiness were ever actually absent from your being, you wouldn't know what to long for. What to feel unhappy about. So what, where, where this is going is when we lose our awareness of the content of our experiences, we said we think it's the experience's content that's creating the unhappiness, but it isn't. It is our desire to be our true nature that, well, it's the desiring. It's the longing. It, the longing does not allow us to be happy because we know that when we are our true nature, we are happy. So it's the longing that brings us to our true nature every time, even in death. It is the longing. And, 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 it, and it is beautiful, whether you look at it in nature, or whether you look at it with your children, or whether you look at it, you know, I have this little plant and it, it moves through its cycles. And to me, it's tremendous recognition to watch relative and absolute happiness continue to cycle as one um, sort of understandable, both visually as well as energetically on all levels, one beautiful example of, of this. So how will you become my plant? <laughs> how can each of us be in that awareness, uh, be so happy to be happy, that's Veronique, yes, but recognize that when the state or feeling of relative happiness comes to an end, which it will every time, that is the nature of everything finite in experience. It has a beginning or an end, but there is no beginning or an end to absolute happiness, yet you and I in body-mind can only get so close to absolute happiness. We can't be absolute happiness or absolute peace or absolute beingness in, we'll say, the experience of a person. But to knowingly choose that no relative happiness is, is irreducible. All relative happiness is reducible.
So we begin to look at the experiences of relative happiness, the advancements, the lessons we explored at the beginning or the end of last month, losing normal. Those things we would never, ever willingly choose to relinquish being taken from us. And yet everything that emerged from that, we wouldn't willingly return, even if it meant we got back what was taken. So this inquiry becomes, um, I hope, very spacious. Yeah, you know, I, I want to also um, interject the concept of relative obviously means by comparison. I mean, relative happiness does not mean making your grandmother her favorite meal and relative unhappiness is taking it away before she gets to eat it. It's a different kind of comparison. So for example, um, I'm thrilled with my car and my car is better than my neighbor's. And now my neighbor got a better car than me and I've got the same car, but now I'm not so happy. It's relative happiness in a sense, it requires a comparison. When we step out of comparison and judgment, the happiness is just what the happiness is. And, and that's an important thing to bear in mind. Sometimes when we're not feeling happy or not feeling happy for long, it's because we're comparing and contrasting the happiness we experience to other times or states that we were in and when we Memories. let go right when we let go of those comparisons and those judgments we suddenly may discover that we've been happy all along because we are happiness and and yes the reconnected healing experience is reconnecting to your absolute happiness in a way and yet Really, the again, the freedom or the peace. Lexi, you wrote something in terms of, but knowing the suffering is finite and there's absolute happiness here too helps me with that suffering. I would also consider that suffering is the reminder of absolute happiness. It isn't that the bringing the suffering to an end um, brings about the happiness. That would definitely be where we get caught a little bit in results and where we are look, looking again sometimes to the conditions of our finite nature and hoping that they will be fixed or changed in a way. Our finite experience isn't that powerful ultimately, that it changes the course of anything absolute. And when we know this, continuing always in this conversation, and with every reconnective healing experience, you are brought to that knowingness. The adjustment, just as if we're looking at sort of being in the rabbit hole here, and, 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 and I, I encourage all of us, again, to, to, to just be with this. It's hard to put into words, but the relative happiness that you live each and every day is an enormous part of um, human advancement in a way. So it isn't one or the other, and the reconnective healing experience isn't here, when we say to live in the frequencies, to, to, to live and love, it is that that knowingness brought, if you will, into the fullness of all, I would say, relative happiness or unhappiness in this way, may be truly just purpose. It may be just simply our highest form or purpose. And that is what you share when you share a reconnective healing experience with someone. Now, um, Frank input 
his thoughts here a little bit earlier. He wrote, or suggested, happiness would be a possible expression or experience of the self arising from pure consciousness. It is the experience of reconnective healing. However, the ego that is in the manifestation of separation will seek to create experiences of delusion to escape, I have to lean closer, so fear. to escape fear. So we run after ephemeral experiences that correspond to doing. With reconnective healing, we do nothing more than experience and identify the self with the clear conscience that it is. Yes, and that's a really beautiful uh, way to share something about the reconnective healing experience. But remember that all finite experience is made from all the same stuff that is your being. That is how we know oneness. And and so again, we're we're it's we're delving into all these ways to explore and and to free uh the mind and the body mind from the uh, uh, illusion of its separateness and 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 we just think that uh, this is a this is a fun and freeing way to uh, uh, take all of the ways in which happiness has been uh, qualified in your life and appreciate both relatives and absolute happiness for what it is and and what you are and what we are and what all of us are so there is a tendency sometimes to look at one thing and if we can appreciate the value in it and discard what appears to be an opposite isn't always an opposite however and isn't always without value which means that a continual state of appreciation enjoyment and gratitude does not equal absolute happiness. So recognize who and what you are uh, in this tremendously uh, comprehensive and, and irreducible way. And um, who has some questions? We've got like five, six minutes before we're going to go to <laughs> our very brave uh leaders yes the live and love mm-hmm. and that's what i think is <laughs> far more love interesting leaders? than their life leaders where right. i think we're gonna have to retitle that now they're love leaders love leader. we have oscar oscar would you please unmute hello Here. everybody hi um i missed the first 20 minutes um completely run out of like my I didn't set my uh my alarm and uh I hope it wasn't too good uh <laughs> but um I wanted oh, to of course say, it was too good <laughs> now I actually to say, after, no, I want you to listen to the replay because we did an exercise and I think it would be amazing for you yeah I came in just as you were finishing it yeah um and I loved what we just spoken about relative happiness and it's it's a finite opposite um sadness and i think in my life um many times the we tend to discriminate relative happiness and sadness and and feel that 
that the relative happiness in itself is maybe not an experience that we should be having, knowing that it's not maybe the real happiness, but rather I find rejoicing in the relative happiness and the sadness in the knowing of being. Because like with any experience, and I think it's like, you know, sometimes we hear that the, the, when we describe this finite um, experience of relative happiness, the ego can, the mind can create a separate box from it. And we can see it as a, as a bad thing, but rather it is, it's neither bad or good. It's, it's all a rejoicing of, of the beautiful oneness that we are. And I, you know, and it, it, when you were speaking about it, you know, uh, thoughts are, uh, have arisen and feelings, um, and something always, not not always, but sometimes gets triggered. You know, an old, an old body, uh, um, a murmur, let's say, something in the body that reacts that oh, we shouldn't be, we should now like I'm judging the relative happiness or the relative sadness, but actually just the recognition that neither is good, neither is neither is bad, and yeah, we are ultimately happiness. But the rejoicing of relative happiness is just the same as as anything else. Um, but but sometimes we get lost in, in the relative happiness, right? Or well, a lot of people think that that is the reality of what is, but actually it's an extension into the finite. So um, I just Very wanted well to say that. Stated. Right. Very well stated. Most lives are lived in the belief that relative happiness is all there is. And, and, and what Oscar's pointing to is to know reality, which is oneness, irreducibly and unnameably your being. And we'll say the reality of our um, finite body-mind life is a, a, a really important uh, recognition. And, 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 and to be, I'm going to say, aware in a relative way during the conversation happening in, we'll call space and time at this moment, um, is no coincidence. You are, the experience of consciousness experiencing itself. So it's, it's just in the same way that you go into yourself to understand yourself. That is exactly what we are. We are consciousness, understanding, and experiencing itself. So get on it in that way. These you know, are um, the relative questions at this moment in space and time. Know the reality of your being and simultaneous, 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 simultaneously live uh, a, a, a relative happy existence. Uh, this is freedom. I see a lot of you putting in there choice and freedom. Yes, your Mar being is that. Margo wrote, yes. could it be that relative happiness is a momentary shining through of the unlimited happiness that we are? Is relative happiness a shining a momentary through. shining through of the unlimited happiness that we are. Yes, and and I guess it would be a it would then be the diffusing of unhappiness. And and the reason, listen, again, the topic of today is the opposite of happiness, unhappiness. I want you each to write down yes or no, and then we're going to give you the answer. <laughs> Right. Is the opposite of happiness unhappiness? Yes or no? But but Mar Margot's expression kind of reminds me of the old of the, of the reworking of the old medical um, axiom. You know, take two finite experiences and call me in the morning. <laughs> okay, so no, the answer is no. The opposite of happiness is not unhappiness. At the very be. best, un unhappiness is, is simply the veiling or diffusing mm -hmm. of this, that. This conversation reminds me 
Can, is my microphone on? Yes, it's go. Yes, go ahead. Okay. This conversation reminds me of um, Rumi's poetry, or um, I'm not sure if you read some of Osho's work, but rejoice in, in life and in good and the bad, because you are that. <laughs> And don't separate yourself from experience because you are that experience. But 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 oftentimes we don't. Oftentimes the knowing is is not there, and that those those maybe some of those teachings can be misunderstood sometimes by some people. But yeah, but like I said, I, I just want to just point to Maybelline here for a moment. And Maybelline, you bring up something really good. No, it's not. And Maybelline says to me the opposite of happiness is fear as well. It, 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 again, there can be no opposite of happiness. The opp opposite of something would be, for example... It could be an absence of, but not an opposite. There, there, sense, not really. there, there, would, there would be... An opposite would be to look at a piece of paper and see black and white. White... Black, black would be the opposite of white. White would be a, so. You, you, we, 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 we need to be thoughtful when we speak in the language of opposites. There can only be opposites in the language, we'll say, of, uh, of, of finite. So, and there can't really even be an absence of happiness. More likely, it's an. Un, it's a not noticing, right. not being in some level of cognizant awareness of happiness. You were talking about fear, though, and Maybelline brought it up, and you asked that question this morning. I was talking about fear earlier. Uh, about fear and love is, you want to restate that? Well, we were looking at fear, not that fear and love are opposites, that fear is, I'm going to go back to what we were saying, that fear is an absence of love. However, it's not really an absence as much of it as it is an obscuring or diffusing because love is never absent. And so we often think, you know, if we don't notice something that it isn't there, we confuse those two. And, and sometimes, you know, it, sometimes people coming out of a reconnective healing experience on rare occasion might say, nothing happened. And then uh, an early or young um, reconnective healing facilitator might go, oh my God, nothing happened. And I have to remind them, I said, don't take what someone did or didn't notice as meaning it was present or absent. I mean, the, the fact is right now, unless you're sitting in front of a mirror, you don't see what's behind you. So you can say, I didn't see or notice something that's behind me. It doesn't mean it's not there. It just means it wasn't noticed. So when we understand the um, who we are, what we are, it's never really gone. It is at best obscured or not observed. And let's defer to Harry's incredible example, the smile that breaks through on the face of a child who is trying to remain in their anger or frustration or upsetness. And that that nature of the child breaking through. It's the nature. The smile is the nature of the child breaking through what the child isn't, which is that proposed that frustration, that angry, anger. fear, yeah, all of the wonderful things that come along with states and feelings and conditions, memories, thoughts, perceptions. Uh, please, it's a huge list of um, occupancy that we are made of. Uh, I mean, again, most of us think our thoughts live in our head, in our brains. Do you really think that the trillions of cells in your body, uh, you're directing through your thoughts? Do, do, do you really believe that your thinking mind has the capacity to, 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 to direct the activities of such a mystery of course not so we need to understand the true nature of our being and this experience that we call myself <laughs> okay anything else
You guys are tremendous in the chat. I am going to say what I said in that Solomon Speaks. Please make sure that you're communicating with each other directly. Uh, your, your, your sharings are so incredible. And um, uh, that's, again, the, the, the RLC is a group of friends. Know each other. Um, play with each other. This is really great. So um, how about let's hear, Cecilia, is it time for some yeah, Live and time. Love leaders live to share with us? Live and Love leaders. That's In the, the Live and Love, these are the are some of our love leaders. <laughs> so I would love to invite, where are they? Here we go. We have Jennifer Lynn Venegas. We have, Hello. there you go, Alejandro Villasenor. And we have Alina Kofay today. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, so. Alejandro and Alina. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, what do you Alina. have to say about that, Alina? <laughs> I know you were about to get going. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, um, I would like to ask you the same, because I noticed, so for me, I have now a crazy idea that um, all that is, is the absolute happiness. So mm -hmm. it's being alive right now. And um, I ask myself, um, what is relative happiness? So maybe relative happiness doesn't really exist. It's only a construct, construct of our ego that is uh, afraid of dying, not knowing that it is already dead by not existing. <laughs> and from this uh, point of view, um, the question is, do you want to live now? The absolute joy that you always are, the is or not. And like Gillian said, I believe that it's a conscious choice that our awareness mm -hmm. is making now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If this if this conversation was going down the rabbit hole, I'll gladly go down the rabbit hole because it just brought me back to that awareness where it, I think, I think relative happiness does exist. What I got from it is that um, it's like peeking through the veil to the absolute happiness and just really being able during the relative happiness to like see the clear picture of everything that's there. And then kind of in the sadness and the times, the finite experiences where it seems like the happiness isn't there it's just an illusion so this whole conversation was just brought me right there into that relative happiness to be able to like peek through to see the absolute you know cool. yeah yeah sure what do you think alejandro, alejandro? uh yeah in the beginning i was a little confused <laughs> i have to admit and now hearing Alina, I think like, well, after all the live and learn, live up and love, <laughs> I think I have come to like a better understanding and seeing how, how, how can, like, like as you mentioned, Alina, like relative happiness might be close to like the, with the ego, like maybe that. Or oh, maybe the happiness that many people sell you, or the or the society sells you, that you have to get this to be happy, uh, and maybe it does bring you like a little bit of relative happiness, but then you find that the happiness is not something outside, like mm -hmm. it it is in you, and that's I, I think the point of this obscuration of, of of happiness, like being unhappy is just uh, obscuration of happiness. And it is always in us. So really what we are trying to, to do is like uh, removing <laughs> the obscuration. I don't know how do you remove <laughs> or, or the expression to that, but it's really coming into us. And I think it's also coming into the present moment like living also in the present moment. And I think Alina can speak more about this. <laughs> um, 
I have a funny example from a training program with Dr. Eric Pearl and Gillian. I was there as volunteer. Mm -hmm. I believe it was um, the first or the second training program. And at least in the last day, we had to pack everything. And I remember I had to pack the headsets, you know, each one, each one. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm so tired. This is so boring. And somehow in that moment, I became very present. And two seconds later, I enjoyed. I enjoyed. There were no headsets anymore, so no object. I can't remember um, how can I did it in five minutes. And I enjoyed i enjoyed the whole process without to see this external object anymore so this is um mm -hmm. an example where i realized hey there is not uh, about uh, <laughs> the headsets or you know, you know it was amazing and in that moment in the in the frequency it was at the begin in the begin as i said as volunteer and then I, in that point, I realized it has nothing to do with the object outside. It's an inner, um, yeah, it's who we all are. We are this joy. And by the end, I was so enthusiastic and joyful and full of energy. And everybody asked me, hey, what is with you? You, <laughs> you are tired. You, you were tired. You were bored. And I said, I have, at the time, I had no idea. So. It's something that is continuous. It flows until the mm -hmm. ego is coming and said, hmm, <laughs> you forgot your object, your objective, your, uh, your goal. You forgot your goal. You didn't do it. <laughs> and you could enjoy for an eternity. And sometimes we experience like the final tie is coming back and sometimes it's continuous, but we are perceiving like this, I believe. You know, we perceive it sometimes, but it continues forever who we are. Yeah, I think a really good point to reiterate from what Dr. Eric and Jillian said is that the reconnective healing experience is, um, I think, reconnecting us with the absolute happiness. And um, I at the seminar that I went to, I remember I had my first in-person reconnective healing session at that seminar, and I got my personal reconnection at that seminar um, during quiet time before the seminar. And I remember um, it could have been considered by some like an uneventful reconnective healing um, session. But one of the things that happens with me is that I laughed a lot during it. Like I thought it was funny. And you might think somebody laughing during a session would mean like, ha, 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 this is a joke. Like nothing's happening. But how funny is it that like my body was showing that I was connecting with that absolute happiness. And I just thought about that during this conversation today. And then also when both of you were talking, Alina and Alejandro, you were um, touching on like the lottery and like things bringing us in and out of the state of like relative happiness. And I think one of the things with the lottery, like to answer Jillian's question earlier, is that um, like we think that these things outside of ourselves are supposed to bring us to that happiness. Um, but just having the awareness that like when you win the lottery, sometimes you realize that what you were expecting um, to make you happy didn't work. And we could have just been happy all along. So I loved this conversation and the reminder. I don't know if either of you wants to say anything else, but I'm done. I'm happy. Yeah. And, and sadly, it's time Relatively to speaking. <laughs> so we can continue this conversation on the RLC. And yeah, for now, it's yeah. time to say goodbye. And yeah, we can have more conversations in, in the RLC, in the postings and everything. So we can see each yeah. other there. Yep, so, yep. Bye bye for now, I guess. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you so much, everyone. Happy, happy, happy.
You Ciao. are wonderful. Bye, everyone. <laughs> I'm placing some links in the chat just to remind you where we are going to be. Come join us on Saturday for Reconnective Yoga. That's something, if you haven't done that, you've got to play with us in Reconnective Yoga. Come join us. There's a link right there. Um, also, uh, our global retreat, our global un uh, virtual retreat uh, for this month is going to be on Sunday, March 28th. Um, and we're discussing the nature of happiness, and it's a full-on retreat. It's not part of the RLC, so you do have to register for it. The link is in the chat, and it's just powerful. We broke, go into breakout rooms, and we discuss in small groups. Then we come back into the big group, and we and we just it's just so transformative. Please join us. Looking forward to seeing all of you, and um, lots of love. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> bye. Bye. Bye.